Welcome to episode 33 of the Babes Talking Business podcast. Today, we have the lovely Cash Lee, who is a full-time travel blogger, an author, and a minimalist, who is a huge advocate for collecting experiences instead of things. She made the bold decision to sell her house and 90% of her belongings so that she could explore the globe while building up her travel brand, Travel Off Path which gets 1 million visitors per year and offers readers the latest travel news and advice. Learning from the pressure in her own past, she loves to talk about mental wellness and social media and how to escape the comparison game trap online. We dive into some pretty epic topics like her transition from being a successful real estate agent to a minimalist blogger who travels the world. She talks about how she's monetized her blog and her tips and tricks on how you can to her personal hardship and lessons around having it all and how that actually didn't really bring her real happiness and we talk about her social media tips on how to be present and in the moment while still influencing and inspiring your audience online without the compromise you can find all of Cashley's social media links in the show notes below for you to connect with her including her instagram and her blog You can also check out our website over at www.babestalkingbusiness.com where we have loads of information, including some upcoming events we have on this year and next, including our Babes in Business Bali Retreat in June 2020. And we just want to take the opportunity to say a massive thank you to our sponsors, The Health Style Emporium, a 16-week online holistic program for women all around the world, educates, inspires, and empowers you to become the happiest, healthiest version of yourself without deprivation, diets, or extreme exercise. The HSC has a beautiful six-week mini program that's just begun. You get a six-week meal plan, a six-week exercise plan, plus support, and we'll be learning about a diverse range of health topics, including toxins, nutrition, mindset, hormone stress, and learning to love your cycle, plus so much more head over to www.thehse.net to find out more. So without further ado, we are so excited for you to hear from this amazing woman, Cashley. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for this episode because this is something I'm really excited to learn about. I've never spoken about blogging and monetizing blogging. So welcome to the show. (laughs) Thank you ladies for having me. I'm really excited to be here. I'm so excited. I know I've been chatting to you online now for a little bit after seeing that you were blogging and you were traveling the world. And I was like, what does this girl do? How does she do it? Where does her money come from? And when you told me that you were creating full-time income from blogging, I was like, this is cool because I know a lot of girls blog, but not many of them are creating an income from it, let alone a full-time income from it. Mm. So I'd love to maybe start back from the start. How did you get into blogging and what were you doing for work before you decided to blog? Yeah, so if we turn the clocks back about five years ago, I was a real estate agent. And so being a realtor, you think you're kind of working for yourself and partially you are. You can Mm -hmm. really set your own hours if you want to. So it's kind of one foot in the corporate world and one foot into the entrepreneur world. And I liked that. The only thing was, is that I didn't realize how much being a realtor would tie me down and how much it would, would really keep me in one location, right? I couldn't leave and go on vacation or leave and travel because I had to be home to show people houses Mm -hmm. and to get listings. I was really tied to an area and I couldn't really get out of that area. So I started looking into ways like how would I be able to have a job where I can do what I love to do most, which is travel and not be so tied down. And I remember reading the book, uh, the four hour work week, Yes, right. I'm sure so many people have read that book yes. and I was like, okay, wow. I, I knew that that's what I had to do, but I kind of put the book on the shelf and, and thought, Oh, that's a one day thing. And then some things happened in my life around real estate where I realized I didn't really like the person that I was turning into. I started First of all, I'll say I was having success with real estate, but what happened was, is I was getting a lot of money and it was coming quickly and Mm -hmm. it was coming, I don't want to say easily, but in a way real estate was booming where I, where I was practicing it. And all that money kind of started to go to my head. (laughs) I started to buy everything in sight. I was 
I needed all the labels. I needed the cars. I bought a Mercedes and a BMW. I built this big house. I thought the more things I could buy, the be- the bigger of a person I would be. Mm-hmm. And I would totally be happy if I could just buy all this stuff and show everyone how cool I was. And slowly it started to make me a really sad, depressed, and angry person because I was truly out of alignment. So what happened was I kind of remembered that book on the shelf about, oh, I can maybe create something better and quit my real estate job cold turkey. Mm -hmm. I just said, I can't do this anymore. It's making me a bad person. It's making me have all these awful habits and I don't want to do this anymore. So I quit cold turkey and I started to look into, okay, I'm going to have to make something else work for me. And I started then building a blog from the ground up. I did take a bit of time off, like six months to 12 months off just to really figure out what I wanted to do. But then I just dug in and started building a blog from ground zero. Wow. Uh, what I find so pivotal in listening to that is the fact that you had that self-awareness to actually check in and say, like, I'm not living in alignment with my values. I don't know many people if they're making good money can do who that. would just turn around and be like, you know what? Yeah, I'm making good money, but it's not for me. Yeah. Like, it's awesome that you obviously had that luxury that money wasn't an issue so you could buy yourself the time to think about what you want. But I don't know many people who no. would actually take the time to be you know what? Like, yeah, I've got the money and yeah, I can have these beautiful things, but I'm not lit up and it's, this isn't aligning with my purpose. So how did... How did you, have you always been very self-aware or was there a turning point when you kind of realized you weren't in tune with that or? Yeah, I think I've always been a more self-aware person. I grew up in a household with parents who were very into talking about feelings and they're both entrepreneurs. And so they've really instilled that into us to really take a snapshot of what our life looks like at the time and how we feel to make sure that everything is in more harmony. But it was, and, and you're right, when I decided like, whoa, wait a second, I can't do this anymore. I did have the luxury that I had made a good amount of money so I could take some time off. But I just, I mean, I was one of those people who in the moment i truly thought, and I think there are a lot of women out there that might currently think this way. I truly thought that if I had that car, my life would be better. Mm. If I had that Gucci bag, my life would be better. Or when I have this big house that I can throw these miraculous parties in that everyone will come to, I'll finally be somebody. I truly Mm -hmm. thought everything was based on when I have this, I will feel that. And when those things didn't happen, when I did not feel that way, once I accumulated those things, I was like, whoa, what a fake dream I believed in for so long. And it made me so empty inside that I had no choice but to realize I can't keep doing this. If I just worked my butt off to get all of these things and impress all of these people, and I feel even worse than I did before, what am I going to feel like if I keep going down this road? Mm -hmm. And that scared me. The thought of that scared me out of out of the security of making good money. So literally did just quit cold Turkey. People thought I was crazy Mm -hmm. because at the time I was making about 250,000 a year. Um, in Canada, I think that's more than what it would be in Australia because you guys have a higher wage. So it'd probably be, you know, 350 or more there. And I mean, that's a comfortable salary, (laughs) right? You can do a lot of things with it, but nothing will ever be worth the the price of what I have to feel like in order to get that money. Yeah. Wow. That's just amazing. You're talking our language here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is like <laughs> ultimate frugalness. I love it because more people need to hear this. A lot of people we talk to are like, yeah, when I have the six figure income, when I have the luxury car, when I have this, then I'll feel better. And it's so not like that. And having been able to chat with you, who now on the other side, you were able to create a career and a business that's totally in line with your values and what you'd love to do. I'd love to talk more into that. Like, so let's go to, okay, you had the year off. How did you come yep. across How blogging? Did, yeah. Like, what, what? Like, <laughs> where did that come from? That's awesome. I love it. Yeah. So my lifestyle changed so dramatically that I'll tell you how the idea for blogging kind of started. So 
now my life, I mean, I live completely differently than I used to. So if you look at the five, me from five years ago, mm-hmm. right, I had this big house, two cars on all the brands, thought I was something so special, had an absolute chip on my shoulder, probably wasn't a great person to be around into today. I, I live half the year in a, in an RV, which you guys call a caravan, yeah. right? Yeah. I live half mm-hmm. the year in an RV and it's on the lake. I mean, it doesn't get any more opposite than that. Mm. Um, it's a very small space. I live as a minimalist. I only have a very few possessions, pretty much any, it, all my possessions can fit into two suitcases. Other than that, I don't own anything else. And my life is very simple living by the lake. We have fruit trees and vegetable gardens out there. We get the water from the lake. It, there's it's minimal bills. It's totally a minimalist lifestyle. And the other half of the year, my husband and I pick a new country to live in around the world. So last year was, we lived in Vietnam. The year before that, we were in Indonesia and in Japan and um, the UK. This year we're in Mexico. And so I live this life that's very different. People are like, what do you mean you travel the world for half the year and you live in a caravan for the other half? That's crazy. (laughs) Tell me more. And so the blog was kind of born out of me sharing how different this life was and how much different my mindset was because of it and how different this lifestyle is compared to what people are currently living in. People are currently trying to get more and I'm trying to get less. So a lot of people ask me a ton of questions and that's kind of where the blog started as a way for me to share my lifestyle and as a way for me to start sharing where the heck in the world we were traveling to. I love that. And so when you started it, it obviously sounds like it was a passion project. It was like a really beautiful like outlet for you to just share your journey and your learnings. Did you have the intention to monetize it or how did that kind of evolve? Well, I, you know what? I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to think. <laughs> it did start, like you said, it started as a hobby and as a passion project. And I think at the time I knew that I could turn it into a business, but I just didn't really know how. Like I knew that I would figure it out. I knew that I would find a way to figure out how to monetize it. But at the time I was just in the dark of how am I going to do this? How am I going to write about my life and then turn it into money? And I mean, that really segues into, it's a long road (laughs) to do that. I did figure it out. Um, but it wasn't, I mean, it took a lot of time. It took a lot of time to figure out how to do it. And there was a lot of trial and error. And when I first started, because it was just a passion project and a hobby, I wrote about things that maybe I wouldn't write about now. It was more like a journal and a diary. And to be honest, I don't know if journals and diaries are really the way you can monetize a blog. So I had to learn that and kind of switch up the way that I create content so that it could be monetized. Wow. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) And because blogging was really big like five years ago, Um, Liz and I were just chatting about this before. And, um, you know, the blogging world has gotten big and then small again and big. And then there's video and now there's Instagram and TikTok. And there are these, all these ways to monetize online. How have you kept up with the times? I mean, blogging is back, obviously it's 2019 now and blogging is really big, (laughs) but did you experience like the ups and downs of that over the last five years? Yes, so much. And lately I've realized how much time I was actually wasting in areas that I should have been applying in different areas. And Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what I mean. So when I first started, blogging was pretty big. But then, like you said, everything started to kind of disperse across other platforms. Mm -hmm. People started getting YouTube channels and Instagram and all these different areas where they wanted to spend their time and try to monetize on all those different platforms. And I thought the same way too. So my blog wasn't really making any money. I was just a newbie blogger. So I thought, Hey, what's the harm in trying to do all these other things? Well, a lot, (laughs) because now I realize that if you really don't pick something and focus on it, you end up doing all the things poorly. So you can either do one thing really, really good, or you can do tons of things not so good. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem that I ran into. I kind of half-assed some YouTube videos that didn't really get me anywhere. And then my biggest, I don't want to say mistake, but maybe my biggest area where I shouldn't have focused as much was Instagram. Mm -hmm. For me, it was a gigantic waste of time. Um, I can elaborate on that if you want. Yeah, absolutely. 
Okay. So about, let's say a year and a half ago, my husband and I were going full speed on Instagram. We were thinking, this is where we've got to be. We're getting some sponsored content. We're finally starting to make a little bit of money. We had, I don't know, I had about six or 7,000 followers on one account and there was 15,000 on another. And a few brands were paying us for some sponsored posts Mm -hmm. or some, you know, unboxings and things like that. And so we thought, oh, wow, this is so cool. Why don't we just put more time into it, make better photos. We'll get more followers. We'll see if we can work with more brands. But what I forgot in that was number one, that I really like to write. And my primary job is a blogger, not an Instagrammer. So Mm -hmm. I was spending five, six, seven hours a day on Instagram when I could have been spending five, six, seven hours a day on my blog, something Mm -hmm. I own. And then the other mistake was, I started to get so wrapped up in pictures on Instagram that I would spend all this time trying to stage and fake and set up photos, then edit these photos and then do filters and captions and hashtags. And I got so wrapped up in the things that weren't actually making me money. Yes, having a social media platform is important for people to connect with you and you can build a great tribe on them. But should I have, I been spending like all that time on it. Should I have been spending eight hours a day making photos when I could have been creating content for my blog, I own again. And that's something that will actually make me money. So I spent a lot of time on Instagram and, you know, to my downfall, no, it was, I'll never make as much money on Instagram as I could have on the blog. Mm -hmm. And Instagram just turned out for me personally to be this unwinnable popularity contest. Mm. And I started to use the platform to compare myself thinking, why don't I have as many followers? Why aren't my travel pictures as good as theirs? And I started to get super caught up and depressed and in that comparison with other people on Instagram. So personally for me, Instagram probably has been my biggest time waster. And Mm -hmm. I feel like probably set me back about a year on track of my goals. What a, yeah, thank you for sharing that. And what a beautiful lesson. I think there's a, a real blessing in that for you because it just allows you to step into your strength. We all have different strengths. And I love that you said you love writing. Like that's your jam. That's what you love to do. And it can be so easy for all of I've been there, all of us to fall into that comparisonitis trap on Instagram where you're like, oh, but that person is doing this and why am I not doing that? And I don't have time. And oh my gosh, it's just like this rabbit hole, isn't it? Especially I think as women who want to create, we want to create and Mm. create an impact. You end up being massive consumers rather than creating content. You sit there consuming a lot, which was, I know for me, I'm like, no, (laughs) create before you consume. Like, because my my high paying activities, make sure I'm creating my content, whether it's a blog or whether it's a podcast or it's an Instagram Mm. post before I sit there and end up in that scroll hole because you can get lost. (laughs) No, that's such a great nugget that you just said to create before uh, you consume is such a, it's so important that I was doing a lot of consuming and comparing. And another thing is that, you know, Instagram at the end of the day, even if someone's listening and they really do make the majority of their money on Instagram at the end of the day, Instagram is owned by Instagram Mm -hmm. and tomorrow Instagram could shut down. It could be like MySpace and no one uses it anymore, or it could completely change all of its rules. And I don't think anybody wants to have their entire well-being or their entire business that they've worked so hard for to be in the hands of somebody else that with one push of a button could totally be over. The thing that I like about the blog is I own it. It's mine. No one else can control it. And and that gives me a lot of solidarity and a lot of um, just... I guess, faith in going forward in this crazy online entrepreneur world. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, I'm going to play like, pretend I know nothing, right? Cause I'm sure there's a lot of girls who are listening to this episode being like, I'm still confused. How do you monetize a blog? <laughs> like, how do you actually get paid? Like where does your income streams come from when writing a blog? Okay. Such a great question. So I will tell you all of the different ways the, the biggest way, I'll just start with the one that makes the most money. <laughs> the biggest way is I work with an ad platform called Mediavine. And I don't know if you guys, if you're familiar with Mediavine. No. Okay. 
Okay, so Mediavine is kind of like Google Ads. What they do is they're a company that if you have a certain amount of traffic coming to your website, they will go out and get people for you to put little ads on your site. You don't have to do anything. There's nothing technical that you need to do. So I'll just give you an example. When my traffic reached 25,000 visitors per month, okay, and I know that sounds like a lot for some people listening, but just hang in there. I <laughs> promise you that it's not as high as it seems and just bear with me on this. So once I got to 25,000, Mediavine said, great, you have enough traffic on your site. We're going to put ads. So we've all seen it. We've all scrolled through an article and every so many paragraphs, we see a little ad and usually they're ad t- ads targeted to us. Mm-hmm. So if we've just been on Sephora looking for the new foundation and then we go on the article, we see a little Sephora ad, right? Mm-hmm. And we're like, oh Yeah. That's exactly what's on my site right now. It's little ads that are every so so many paragraphs in a blog, and they're usually targeted to the person that's reading the blog. And every single time someone sees one of those ads, I get paid, I don't know, it's like 0.01 cent or something mm-hmm. like that. But it adds up because you have all these people, and then you times it by the day and the weeks and the months. So the majority of my income, I would say 80% of my income comes from having ads on the site. And I'll tell you why ads are actually a great thing. So some people might say, oh, I don't want ads on my website. I think they're ugly or I can't really control what ads are shown. And I'm worried that people aren't going to like my blog if they scroll through ads. It's the thing. I promise you, nobody cares. (laughs) Have you, nobody will not go to your site because they might encounter an ad in your content. Totally. And for, for me, having ads is a great way for me to stay unbiased. I don't have to rely on companies to pay me to write sponsored content, which is always biased. Even if you're giving your true, true, true opinion, there's a slight bias there, right? Mm -hmm. So if like, I don't know, if Ole told me, Hey, I want you to write an article about our cream. Obviously it's going to be slightly biased, Mm -hmm. but if I can write an article about whatever I want and still get paid, that's so great for me. And it's better for my readers. I can Mm -hmm. be my true authentic self, I don't have to write what people tell me to write and I can still make an income and a living from my blog. So that's why I absolutely love ads. So biggest majority would be from ads. Then there's obviously sometimes I will accept some sponsored content only if it truly fits. Mm -hmm. If it's a hotel, I know my readers are going to love, or if it's a tour company or something that I know is really great, or I really like their brand already. I'll take a sponsored post. It's not a problem. I'm happy to write about them. And then the third is affiliate marketing. So if I'm writing about the luggage that I have, which I love, and if I'm writing a review blog on it, it might have an affiliate link in there from Amazon. So if someone clicks on the link because they want to buy the bag themselves, I'll earn a small commission from them clicking on that link inside the blog. So those are the three major ways, sponsored content, affiliate linking, and ads. That's really how you can monetize without, I didn't even go into social media. That's mm. just the blog. I've that got, is so cool. Yeah. <laughs> I've got so many questions. And they're like, ding, 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 ding. Cause I have, for me, everyone learns differently. I'm such like a, I need to know the intricate details. Like how does this actually work? So like <laughs> if you, for an example, with the ads on your page, cause there's probably newbies who are like listening to this, who have got a blog. They love it. It's a passion project. They're thinking, why not? It'd be awesome to create an income yeah. stream from this. How the hell did you go from zero to 25,000 a month? And at what point do you start thinking, Oh, I'm, it might be worth getting some ads on my blog. Yes. So there are ad companies that will accept you for having far less amount of traffic. I think Google ads will accept you after you have a few thousand. And there's some other ad networks that will accept you after 10 and 25. I knew about Mediavine because I had met a girl who was also a travel blogger. And she said her life changed when she was able to qualify for Mediavine. As soon as she, that was her goal, she said, I'm going to get to 25,000 because I know that will be a great chunk of money. And when I was like, oh, what's Mediavine? And I kind of looked into it. Once she hit that and she was sending me what she was making and she was sending me all these, um, just in more information about it. I'm like, Whoa, that's my goal. I got to get to 25. <laughs> so I'll tell you how to get to 25 and it's not sexy. 
all right? <laughs> and people aren't going to like it, but this is the truth. This is business though, right? Yeah. And this is what we yeah, want. Yeah. We want to yeah. get rid of the sugar coating because people think it's all fun. And it's like, you didn't see all the, the hard work, the hard stuff, and the, yeah. boring, the boring stuff that happened between that. <laughs> Give it to us. So here, I want to hear here's it. what it is. You got to write your ass off. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you got to write in the day. You got to write in the night. You got to write when you're sick. You got to write when you'd rather be out with your friends. You've mm-hmm. got to write, 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 write. And then when you think you've written enough, you have to write some more <laughs> and then you have to write some more. And I'm not, I'm not kidding. It's that's all it is. And I see some people that start a blog and they think, I really want to turn this into a full-time business because I love it. Maybe it's on a topic that they truly love. And you have to make sure you love that topic because you're going to be writing about it till Mm -hmm. the cows come home. You're going to write about this thing all the time. So you better love it. But I think I have 700 posts on my blog. It, it, you have to write tons Mm -hmm. and it doesn't, it doesn't start to pay off at first. So for example, the, when I first started the blog, I wasn't taking it very seriously. I was maybe writing once every other week. <laughs> That's not enough. <laughs> so I was slowly writing these posts and yeah, I was getting a little bit of traffic, but it just wasn't enough. There was nothing for Google to find me about because I'd only have a few blogs. So for SEO, which is search engine optimization, how is Google going to serve my blog up to people that are searching for different travel topics. When I barely have any travel content, Google's saying, no, you, you haven't proven yourself. I'm not going to put you on the front page of Google. You only have six articles, right? So I had to make Google love me. And in order to do that, I had to write 100, 200, 300, 400 articles, and they all had to be travel or travel lifestyle related. Then Google started to say, Hmm, you're kind of an authority on some of these subjects and topics. I am going to put you on page two or page one. And then when I started to get ranked high in Google for the search terms I'm looking for, so travel related stuff, that's when I started getting tons of traffic. I wrote this one blog and it was how to take a grab in Bali. Cause if anyone's been to Bali, they'll know that there's no Uber there anymore. You have to take a car, like a mm-hmm. taxi through a company called grab. And I wrote that blog and it got me, it started to get me 10,000, uh, visitors per month, just that one article Wow! because so many people were searching on how to take a grab in Bali. And so when you have a whole bunch of those high ranking articles that are really niche, like it's super, super specific stuff, all of a sudden Google's like, Whoa. And they start serving you up. You start getting tons of traffic and then qualifying for media vine is easy peasy, but it took two years of writing hundreds of articles in order to get those ones that are now the superstar. If I had written that article first, it was my first blog ever. Google wouldn't care about it. They would never show it to anyone. Google only shows that blog to people because I have seven, 700 other blogs to back it up. That's crazy. 700 blogs more than that in three years. That's like one a day, nearly a blog a day. Would you say about? Well, it started out when I was doing it like once every other week, then it went to once a week Now I'm doing three a day. (laughs) Wow. So yeah, it's a lot. (laughs) That's crazy. And you know what? Like I'm, I hope I don't actually, I know I will offend people, but listening to this, there's a lot of people who enjoy blogging, but they do not have what it takes to write three a day. How long did it actually take you being consistent and showing up before Mm. you saw any money coming from your blog, let alone a full-time income? Yeah, let's see. So when I started to see any money coming I mean, it was probably after the first year that I would see some money coming in where I was like, oh, okay, this is, this, this is okay. Like I can start to pay some bills or this might pay for a flight or a hotel. Like this is awesome. And then I would say it didn't start actually covering any kind of cost of living or bills until I'm going to say I was two years in. So it was about one year ago that it actually started to sort of pay off. And then in the last six months, I mean, it's been great because the thing is when, once you get, once you start to monetize, it starts to build. And everyone talks about this really in any business, whether you're in uh, network marketing or whether you have your own business or you run a blog, whatever it is, things start to compound upon themselves. And that's a beautiful thing. The compound effect is like, Oh my gosh, it's gold. (laughs) So what starts off as, Oh, I made a dollar on my Amazon affiliate or I made $20 with Mediavine today. It starts to build. And all of a sudden you're like, Whoa, a blog went viral. And all of a sudden in the last 
24 hours, I just got $500 from Mediavine for all the traffic on my site. Like, what's happening? And it's nuts. I'm having That's this chuckle cool. because I can actually remember me having a conversation with Shani about this compound effect in my business. I think I was probably in it for a year. And six, same thing, six months in, I was like finding myself and I was doing a little bit, but not really giving it a good nudge. But then the six months after that, I was like giving it my all. Like I was working long days around my full-time job. I remember hopping on a call with Shani and being like, this is effed. Like what the hell? Like I'm putting in so much time. Like where is this money that everyone keeps talking about? She's like, I promise you there's a compound effect. You'll hit lift off. Just trust me. And I'm like, you're a crazy bitch. And then I remember wanting to quit. And I'm like, no, nah, because I could sell people in front of me. And that gave me the faith that it did work, but I just wasn't seeing it myself. But then it, it did. It got to a point in my business where it just flipped. And that compound effect, I was at the start, I was putting in so much more time than I was seeing my money. Mm. And now I'm putting, I'm getting so much more money in return for the time I'm putting in. Like I, we could travel yeah. for months and not work and the income keeps coming in. And I'm like, yeah. I wouldn't, it's crazy that compound effects. I don't think you actually, it seems too good to be true. And a lot of people who are, are in the trenches in their first year or two in business, yeah. whether it's a startup, whether it's network marketing, whether it's blogging, whether it's affiliate, it's, I think they don't believe us. No, <laughs> but it requires patience. No, totally. It really requires a special type of person to be like, you know what? I trust in this and it will come. And when it comes, it's like a freaking avalanche and you cannot stop it. It is like, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's why it's called the compound effect, right? (laughs) Exactly. And you're so right when you say that some people don't seem to believe it because it's so hard for many people to believe what they can't see. Mm. And so many people have had that nine to five and their parents had that nine to five. So, you know, you go to work, you come back and at the end of the week, you get paid this amount and it's always the same and it never changes and it's always for sure. But when you tell somebody you're going to be like an alchemist and you're going to create something out of absolutely nothing, because what is a blog? It's thin it's ab- mm. It doesn't even exist in the real world. You're going to create something out of nothing and it's going to bring you money eventually if you work at it for a few years yeah. tirelessly without seeing any sign that it's even alive, that it's even going to be giving you any money at all. That is such a hard concept. And when I tell people, you know, a lot of people ask me like, what do you even do and how do you even make money? And it's so hard for them to, to Comprehend. even grasp onto that. But I, and I didn't necessarily even believe it. There were times like, it's been a roller coaster. You guys, you know, I would think, okay, I, I think I'm going to make money in like, you know, after the first year and then I might make a dollar or $2, then it goes down. I'm like, Oh my God, I'm going to have to get a job. I'm going to have to crawl back to real estate with my tail between my legs. And then it goes back up. I'm like, wait a second. I just made some more. Oh no, no, I can't do this. Like I'm a failure. And there were so many of those hills and valleys that, I mean, there were hundreds of them. And my husband can attest that there were many nights when I would break down crying being like, I don't know if this is going to work. But even after that cry, I still had that that glimmer of faith that I knew if I just kept working, there was no way that it couldn't work. Yeah. And so I just kept working and that's all you can do. And then all of a sudden it's just like, boom, it just appears and I it works. That. And well, let's talk a little bit into that because I know that for a lot of content creators where this is like their full-time gig, you don't, necessarily wake up every day jumping out of bed and want to create, right? There are days where you're like, oh my God, if I have to create a blog or if I have to create a video, if I have to do a post, like I might explode. What happens on days like that for you? How do you get through the days where you're just not a hundred percent and you're just like far out? I don't know. How do you do it? I think I just roll with those days. I'm not going to be the person that says I'm perfect every day, even though I'm preaching to people that you have to write, 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 and write Mm -hmm. some more. There are days when I cannot get that creative ball going, even if I put on music and I start dancing or work out or meditate or do whatever it is, somehow I still can't get it. Then you know what? I say creativity is not happening to me today. I'm going to go and do something completely 100% non-work related in hopes that I get some sort of seed of genius Mm -hmm. implanted in me (laughs) that will give me a great idea. So if say like tomorrow, if I wake up here and I cannot write, I cannot figure out anything, I'm going to go outside. I'm going to go look at the ocean because it's just right here. I'm in Mexico, or I'm going to go walk down 
an unfamiliar street and just see what happens because I might meet somebody that tells me a story about a tour company he has, or I might all of a sudden look at the sunset and have a great idea about best, you know, a blog that I could write called the 10 best places to watch the sunset in the world or whatever. I might get a great idea from doing something that's just not work related just to fill my cup because I know if I'm not full, I can't, I can't be this blog writing machine. And so what does an average day in your life look like now as a blogger? It's so different (laughs) day to day, but right now, recently, my husband and I have been on like, so he, he works with me now. Um, he is also working on my blog with me full time. So we're both full time bloggers, which is great. Um, and so our routine lately looks like we get up really early. Um, again, people think I'm on vacation. They think I'm on this endless vacation. They're like, Oh, she's in Mexico. She's probably just by the pool or like, you know, tanning or doing something. Mm -hmm. No, no. We get up at six. And we start doing some social media or I'll start writing. We try to, we aim to have two to three blogs between the two of us done by 11 AM. So we're up in the morning, we're writing. I haven't even, you know, showered yet in the morning. I have no makeup on. I look absolutely crazy. Um, you know, I've got the top (laughs) on going on like gym jams. He's like, wow, this is marriage. This is life. Okay. (laughs) And, um, so we both just work with our heads down until about 11 And then we, we kind of try to take like a break just to get up from the computers. Um, we try to make like a healthy lunch or we try to go for a little walk or just do something. It takes us away from the computer. Then at about one, we go back to work. We try to pop off another blog or a lot of research we need to do as well. So we're researching or doing social media. And then in the afternoons recently from about 3 PM to say seven or 8 PM, we're going out and exploring because right now we're trying to do blogs about where we are in Mexico. And so we want to look into the different restaurants and the different hotels and the different areas so that we can get the content in order to write the blog. So we're going around with cameras, going around with notepads, taking notes, learning things. Um, so we kind of try to pair our research with our touring, but the days don't always look like that. (laughs) I have loved chatting to you today. It's so inspiring kind of getting an insight into other people, how other people are working because people Mm. are so groomed until you're exposed to entrepreneurship and you get talking to people online and you realize that online is actually a really cool place to connect with other women and hear what they're doing and be curious. And yeah, I've just learned so much from you today and I've got inspired to think of other ways of creating income too. I think it's so cool the opportunities that we have today in the 21st century with social media at our fingertips. We're so lucky. Like you said before, blogging is like thin air. It's it's like literally the, the fact that you're able to create what you have through the internet. I think it just makes me so grateful for the opportunities that we have. But yeah, if you haven't checked out the blog, oh my gosh, we'll have it in the show notes. Yeah. It honestly, I, we checked it out just before travelofpath.com. It is next level, girl. I really want to like commend you for what you've created. It's beautiful and it's inspired both of us so much. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. That's so nice of you to say. Before we jump off, what's any advice you would give to maybe women who are starting a business, whether it's a blog or something else and they're in the trenches? I think my biggest piece of advice is find out what your next milestone goal is and go for it like crazy. So if your personal goal is like you want to monetize a blog, then you got to pick, you got to find out what the, what the areas are where you, where you need to be, like how much traffic do you need to get qualify for an ad network in your country, figure that out, go for that goal like crazy. Or maybe that's not, maybe your goal is you want to get, you want to make a thousand dollars with sponsored posts on Instagram. You got to figure out how much you can make per post right now. And then figure out how to get to that thousand goal, whatever your goal is, no matter what it is, find it, make it a milestone one. Don't make it a little baby goal. That's really small and puny. Make it a pretty big one, but just focus on that and just forget all the other stuff. Push it away. Keep the blinders on. Don't worry about what everyone else is doing, but just work to that one goal like hell. Once you get there, then you can have the freedom to diversify. Then you can have the freedom to go after other little goals, but just for once in your life, pick one thing and just go for that one thing and see where that takes you. Love it. 
That was an awesome piece of advice. Thank you so much. And thank you for being so open with your business and sharing all the nitty gritty details. I, yeah, I've lis- I'm going to listen to this again. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy Mexico. We'll be following your blog. Yeah, thank you so much. We hope you loved today's episode of the Babes Talking Business Podcast. We're loving bringing you these episodes. Our mission really is to share and add value to your week, whether you're a budding entrepreneur or you're a veteran and you've been owning your own business for quite some time. Don't forget, if you're loving our podcast, we would absolutely love and appreciate for you to rate us and drop in some love on the iTunes app by giving us some feedback. We want to do something really exciting and we want to do a shout out of the week every week on our Instagram for anyone who reviews us. So please make sure you leave us five sparkly stars and you give us your feedback, but don't forget to add your Instagram handle or website so that we can shout you out. You can follow us on Instagram at Babes Talking Business, or you can check out our website at www.babestalkingbusiness.com. You can check out the Health Style Emporium Online Holistic Health Program, our beautiful sponsors over at www.thehsc.net. All of these links are available below in our podcast notes and on our website. Thanks for tuning in.